Our lives are linked as never before, connected in a thousand unseen ways. But sometimes these connections can pose an invisible threat. You don't have to cough, you just have to breathe. It's the worst kind of contagion, it's airborne. Old diseases are returning as nervous parents skip or delay their children's shots. Brooklyn, a measles outbreak begins. It's like telling me, look, we found smallpox. No one sees measles. Who sees measles? This is New York. 58 are infected, including two pregnant women, one of whom miscarries. All were unvaccinated at the time of infection. If we didn't have the high vaccination levels in New York City, we would have had hundreds, if not thousands, of cases. And you know, as doctors, your job is to try and save children's lives. And when you stand helplessly by and watch them die, it gets to you. More than 90% of Americans vaccinate, but in some areas, pockets of low vaccination form, often fueled by mistrust and fear. Alarming stories spread. This beautiful girl is my daughter, Jody. She's 16, and she has autism. In 1998, an English doctor, Andrew Wakefield, claimed a link between autism and MMR, the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine. When I read that, I was taken aback. We have to look at this. Eventually, that study was shown to be fraudulent, and it was withdrawn. Now, new research is revealing the genetic causes of autism and that it begins in the womb. We don't know everything that causes autism, but all of the genetics is pointing to fetal origin. I think we were right to look at whether vaccines might be a cause of autism, but there comes a point where there's so much evidence, none of which shows any link between vaccines and autism, that you have to say, enough. In a time where misinformation can spread so rapidly, it can be difficult to sort fact from fiction. Nobody is willing to really have a conversation with you and discuss what's a severe reaction, is it okay to have a seizure? I don't know who to ask. There's no such thing as an unbiased source. We ask them to trust that we are recommending the best thing for their children. That's a big deal. If the number of vaccinated people decreases just a small percentage, it can lead to an outbreak. At this critical moment, NOVA investigates the science of vaccines. How do they protect us from disease? The less the disease exists in my circle or the next, the safer I am. What are the real risks of vaccinating? It's a balancing act. The risks happen to be minuscule. The benefits are enormous. What are the consequences of opting out? If you start to decrease vaccine immunization rates, you start to see the diseases reemerge. On the front lines of medicine, what can be done to prevent more outbreaks? It's not about saying, oh my gosh, I'm afraid, and now that's the end of the conversation. No, that's just the start of the conversation. Vaccines, calling the shots on NOVA.